Call me Tessa and I may just want to punch you in the face. Wow! <laughs> You're so competitive. You will pick anything to compete with. <laughs> That's the greatest thing about this whole live streaming idea, period. All I want to do is take criticism all day long to be a shield <laughs> for everybody else to, to then yeah. be themselves. I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, oh, I believe in this dream I've been dreaming, oh, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, oh, I believe in this dream I've been dreaming, oh. All right, everybody, Tess is here because she is helping me break through my limiting personal beliefs so that mm -hmm. I can go off and get 10 million subscribers and change the world. Change that world. So here we change are. Change that world. I am, she's coming to you from, are you still in Melbourne or like outside Melbourne? No, I'm in, I'm in Hobart. So that's, you know, the little heart-shaped island at the bottom of Australia. That's where I live. I live at the bottom of that little island at she's the moment. I'm moving to Melbourne at the end of the year though. Oh, okay. She's moving to Melbourne at the end of the year. She's in the bottom of the heart-shaped island from the bottom of her heart <laughs> to from all of Australia's heart to us. And I'm here in Hollywood, yeah. Florida right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing a keynote tomorrow. So Nina, my wife, uh, booked me into an Airbnb right across the street from the hotel. Oh, I just saw your view on yeah. your Insta story. Oh. Because, mm -hmm. because hotel, mm -hmm. this is why, because hotel internet usually sucks to do Zoom. Yeah, right. So she yeah. booked me an Airbnb right across the street so that we could do this. So thank you, Nina. We Thanks, didn't have Nina. We love you. Contest. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I know you gave me All homework. Right. Is, there, yes. is there anything we need to talk about before we get to my homework? No, go. Okay. Right to the homework. Okay, so, so my specific homework was, uh, when specifically do I not feel good enough? What mm. triggers it was my assignment. And so um, I've been thinking about it, and I reviewed it on the airplane mm. here this morning so that I would be fresh. And I, got, I got my list here. Oh, and yeah. so, so this is it. So I split it into two categories. Okay. And wait, let's give a little bit of, why is this important? How is this going to help me get to my big goal? Give us some knowledge test. Okay. Well, okay. I guess, you know, we've identified first and foremost that you don't like disappointing people. Yeah. And we've also identified that there are times when you don't feel good enough. Well, that's the fear that drives, that's the fear that underpins that fear of disappointing people. Um, and I think that when we feel that we're not good enough or when we feel that we're going to let people down or we believe that we're going to let people down, what that does is it undermines our confidence and sometimes can affect our decision making. So we think about when you're tired, think about when you've had a bad day, think about when you're sick, you might make decisions that are more heavily influenced by those fears than when you're on top of your game. Because when you're on top of your game, you know, nothing matters, you just you know, yeah. got this totally all over this. But we all have those moments when we're not on top of our game and that's when we can, can be vulnerable to making decisions that aren't in our best interest if we're not consciously aware of what those fears are and recognising them when they pop up. I know when I'm tired, when I'm tired, I have all of the doubts, I have all of the, you know, all those negative things will flood in, but I've trained myself too to be aware of that and to recognize it when it happens and just go, whoa, I need to step back, not make any decisions right now. Just give myself some self-compassion and think about it again tomorrow or journal on it or whatever. And so, so it's about being aware of these things. So I wrote down, I don't know, 12 things, something like that. Um, yeah. And so the hope is that by, by listing them out, I can become more aware of them when they're happening and then yeah. take corrective course. Absolutely right. Okay, good. Okay. You get a gold star. Gold star? All right. Gold star. I'm an achiever. Okay. Just look how proud you are. You're so happy. <laughs> you could actually hand out like test gold stars. I should. Yeah. I should get some made. Hey, yeah. 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 Merchandise. I wouldn't wear a gold star hat if you gave me one. Oh, man. No, no. I'm going to talk to Mark Drager about designing me a gold star hat. Right? <laughs> right, yeah. How, how hot is it in, in where you are right now? Oh, seriously? Yeah. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I'm Can I? Because I'm in Hollywood, Florida. <laughs> oh, that is not. I think I win. I think I'm hot. <laughs> oh, you, you totally win. You wow. totally win. Is it's it winter spring. Now? It's winter, right? Oh, it's spring. Okay. It's, it's spring. So I've got my friend here getting warm. It's spring. It's going to be 11 degrees Celsius today. Oh, we had like wow. a really 
Holy cow. I didn't even know it got that cold. Toronto's warmer than, than Australia. I have told you that Hobart gets cold. This is like the whole of Australia, mind you. This is the bit at the bottom, which is like next stop Antarctica. I keep telling you. We know zero. We just think... Oh, I know you know oh, zero. Man. I know you know zero. We will keep wow. arguing this. I know you know zero. But yes, it gets cold here. And um, so springtime is very... In in Tasmania, springtime is very, you know, changeable. It's, That's it's what you not, want spring to be, right? It's 19 and rainy in Toronto today. And I'm coming here to Hollywood. Okay. And that's, not, yeah. that's actually a little cold for what we should be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's 35 and crazy here. I go outside and I'm melting and I'm like, I'm so yeah. excited. I want to have a, I want to have a heat off with Tess today. And it's, it's not, it's not even close. <laughs> well, I'm going to be on the Gold Coast uh, in Queensland in November running a retreat for my Inner Circle members Yeah. at a hotel. Two spots left, people. Go get your tickets. Two spots. Two spots go. left. You got to go all the way to the heart of Australia, but it's worth it. All the way to my heart oh. um, because they're very special people. Um, and so we are having our first retreat at a hotel that has a beautiful swimming pool. It's like a lagoon and it's got tropical fish in it. Oh, nice. I know, right? Uh, and so then we'll be able to have a heat off because that's oh. where it's warm. But, but you hit 35, right? Like 35 you hit. Oh, 35. easy. Yeah, 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 even here we will hit, we'll hit 35 here in summer. Yeah, yeah. okay. I was excited. All right. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You're so competitive. You'll pick anything to compete with. <laughs> You'll pick anything. <laughs> That's spice of life, Tess. Spice of life. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Compare, who has more limiting beliefs? Okay, good. So, so, so I broke this down into in the two, two groups. All right. One was before something happening. So like the fear that I won't be good enough. Because mm-hmm. you asked me when I feel not good enough. So when I feel like I may not be good enough for something. Uh, oh. or after a failure and I feel like I wasn't good enough. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. Like preventative versus yep. like something actually happened. Yep, something actually happened. That's right, yep. And I had way more on the what actually happened than fear of mm-hmm. something coming up. But um, anyway, we can go through them. And the last one. I'm but that's st- interesting in itself because when I've asked you about that before, you've struggled to identify examples. <clears throat> and the only example I I remember you being really consciously able to give me was the one with the mentoring guy yeah. who that is blog post. So this is already demonstrating that, that there's this is more easily accessible now. You're recognizing it already more easily if you've got a list. Yeah, yeah. I mean it took me a while, but I think it's mostly most of the things are letting myself like I feel not good enough to myself more than mm. Yeah, yeah. But but yeah. whatever. I'll say them and you can tell me where I suck. Right. Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, so before things happen, the first one I put was interviewing somebody new. So when I, when I have somebody on that I need to interview and I don't have a lot of context on them, I'm always worried I'm not going to bring enough value or, um, uh, you know, have a good show yeah. or say the wrong thing or get the intro right. And even, I know you want specifics. So I, had, I came with a specific example for all of these. So yeah. um, I had a guy on my, on my Instagram live yesterday or the day before um called the hardcore closer and this guy's a super fan of my channel he's been watching my videos for like multiple years he's posted on his instagram like i can't wait to go on evan's show um and i'm nervous before getting on the show that i want to introduce him properly i want to know what kind of questions i'm going to ask him you know mm. and I'm, so i'm practicing before the show and and i i catch it here's what happens most of the time i catch it and they're yeah. like I'm so excited that I'm nervous, right? Like I'm pumped that I'm nervous. I'm doing something scary, but it, it still makes me feel like, why am I nervous? Well, I feel like I'm not good enough. That it's not gonna, it's not gonna go well. I'm gonna disappoint him, the audience, something. Um, even though I always know that we always crush it. But anyway, uh, the second one was taking the stage at workshops. So even I had a workshop yesterday. I, every week I have a workshop at my studio, and uh, I have to prepare a topic. And most of the topics I can just talk to, but I'm still nervous going there. Yeah. Like I hope I do a good job, and and it always ends up again. Most of I mean I've never sucked mm. in a workshop, but I still uh, have not anxiety, but nerves going in. And then again, it's like I'm, I'm pumped. I'm going to crush it if I catch it. Um, filming my espresso series in the morning, that morning series that I have, it's the longest that I talk for each video, and I always have to. Yeah. 
I put a lot of pressure to make it better than last week. It's one of my longest series too. And so like, I, I want this one to be better than the last one, better than the last. I want to see my improvement. Yeah. Um, so every time I have, a, I have a little procrastination every time on Tuesday when I'm filming my videos as I'm preparing yeah. for those because it makes me nervous. Um, and then this one was awesome. You're going to, I think you might, I think this might be the whole show or another show or whatever. Uh, okay. Um, so live streaming. So one of the things that I'm doing, yeah. not like something, not something like this where it's set talking to the camera, but yeah, yeah, yeah. for my tour, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out how can I live stream the whole tour? So next year, 90 days, 20 something cities, I want to stream 10 to 12 hours a day. Uh, eight to eight to twelve hours a day, depending on what we're doing, and I'm going to have a guy with me. I'm not doing it myself. Mm-hmm. No way, I, I would die. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm going to have a guy with me who's going to wear a backpack yeah. that has a camera attached to it that that films me the whole day, and then and then if I'm in the bathroom or whatever, like he'll come in front of the camera and, and talk to to the to the audience as well. Um, now that that's super easy when I'm talking to the camera and most things I don't mind doing, but, but I was doing, uh, burpees yesterday, you know, burpees, like the workout. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was doing yeah. Burpees, and I was sucking and I'm just getting back into my fitness routine. Cause, cause my neck gave me so yeah. many like restrictions on what I could do. And so I'm doing yeah. burpees and I'm sucking like brutal. I can't get, I'm halfway through the, the workout and I'm dying on the floor. And, and in my head, I'm thinking, this is going to be the stuff that gets live streamed, right? It's not just, Hey, ask Stefan a question where it's totally great. It's me sucking doing burpees. And in my head, I'm hearing the voices on the other side of the camera saying like, dude, you suck. You can't even do like 40 burpees. What's wrong with you? And then I'm pumped because I want to, I want to eat that and show me eating that because everybody else who, who like, I, I think all I want to do is take criticism all day long to be a shield for everybody else. <laughs> To, to then yeah. be themselves, right? Yep, yep. I think that's, that's the greatest thing about this whole live streaming idea, period, that I'm going to get yeah, picked yeah. apart for everything that I do, and then how do I react to it becomes a shield for everybody else to, to, like, how do you deal with the haters? Instead of just me saying, like, ignore the haters. Now, here, here I am actually doing it. Um, yeah. But I'm worried about, I'm worried and, and very excited over what would I be afraid to, to share on the live stream, right? Like, I'm not gonna go to the bathroom when the live stream, great, okay. But like, no. what, are, what are some of the things that I might get judged for? Like, I couldn't come up with an example before when I was thinking mm. it through, but I think the burpees is a great example where here I am mm. sucking, gassed out, where maybe half my audience could be doing a better job than I could. And, and then how do I react to that? Yeah, right, okay. I'm, I, I, I'm and, just, I'm like, just, my mind's still catching up with 12 hours of live streaming. Okay. I, I just think it's insane I, in a great way. It's just totally insane. I think this might be the whole thing. Like, I think that might be watching that video <laughs> back and then even having my audience spot moments where I am uh, holding myself back or limiting or whatever to catch it. And then we could like talk about it and cut clips and, and, and you could fix me. Like, I think actually <laughs> seeing my life because. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm too, I think I'm too, uh, I don't know. Like I always try to be honest, but obviously there's like layers that. Oh, look, totally, totally. You know, I, I, I notice, for example, I notice, um, I think, I think we are much more uh, relaxed in our conversations than we were when we, when we first started, cause we're still getting to know each other. So I'm always disappointed when I do an interview that, that probably the best stuff is the before and after because <laughs> yeah. that's when we're at the people I'm talking to are, are at their most relaxed and same with me. So there's that interesting thing about what happens when your guard's down and you, you are, you're not on, you know, you're yeah. not on in front of the camera. You're just being you and just doing your thing. Um, yeah. See my fear, if that was, if I was in your shoes, it would be a different fear. So my fear is boring the hell out of people. And people being overexposed and, and sick of the side of my face, yeah, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. 
So but, it, I, I think it's a great, it's a great challenge. Well, see, this is what excites you because because mm. if it's just me now, if I there will be some things that I just can't take people into because it's a private yeah. meeting or something. In which yeah. case, we can, we can throw it another video or the person with the backpack can come in front of the camera and answer questions or whatever. But but I want there to be sometimes where it's just me working on the computer, mm. and yeah. it can be like work yeah. with me. Hey, let's work yeah. together. Or I'm yeah. not going to talk to the camera, but yeah. I, wanna, I think it's the opposite of Instagram where everything is fancy and perfect and like amazing and beautiful. Like, no, this is boring, real life, hard work. Let's yeah. go. I mean, that's why I still defiantly do all my videos live streamed because I don't have the time to get perfectionistic and I know how perfectionistic I can get mm -hmm. uh, with pre-records and editing and all that sort of stuff. I've gotten better at editing myself in a live stream, um, but I would much rather get the thing done and out there imperfectly than agonise over making it perfect and it potentially not getting done or not getting done in a timely fashion. Um, but it was just reminding me, a friend of mine, Valerie, she was doing a live stream recently um, it was a brainstorming session. So she was doing a brainstorming session for herself with her pens and paper and some music playing and people were popping in and out of her live stream and it was just her working like you in front of the computer, right? Just her working. And so people popping in and out and chatting with her on this live stream yeah. and that was helping her motivation for her brainstorming session. And, and I'd never seen any, anything like it. I thought it was fabulous. You know, she's singing along with the music intermittently and, you know, having a great time with her whiteboard and her markers and, you know, and it was totally cool, totally cool. It was like being in the room with her. So I think that yeah. stuff is easy. Mm -hmm. What I'm, what I'm interested in is like, if I, if I snap at Nina for something mm -hmm. and then people are like, Whoa. Right? Ooh, all day long. Right? Like, oh, There's going to be a hashtag, cranky clip And send it to Tess and let's talk about it. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm really but then all I'm expose but then all I'll be, Yeah, but then you'll just be demonstrating that you're human, right? But exactly. Like, I think, but isn't yeah. that, I think that's how we actually fix this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morning, darling. Yeah, yeah. I, but you don't, wanna, you don't want to fix being human. You don't want to fix being human, but you, you, I guess being unafraid of demonstrating all your humanness. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. A, it's, you know, and the same with an interview, you know, if you're conducting an interview and you're not perfectly prepared, you're human. Yeah. You know, that's the answer. The answer is you're human. You can't know everything about everyone and you can't. Um, so I met Amberly Largo. I don't know if you know Amberly Largo. She's a speaker and an author and, um, She's a former dancer and um, professional athlete and had a horrific motorbike accident, um, nearly lost her leg. Amazing story. Amazing story. A mutual friend connected us. Um, we were going to record a podcast interview, right? And we connected so perfectly. We actually just spoke for an hour. We never actually pressed record for the podcast. So we just chatted for a full on hour, had such a great conversation. So we're going to come back and do the podcast we're probably going to collaborate on a few things together now we just you know vibed off each other totally um we didn't even talk about any really of the things that we might have talked about on a podcast we just got to know each other and for me probably six months ago eight months ago I would have rushed into recording a podcast mm -hmm. I just would have been pressing record and going with the agenda because that's what I should have been doing and fearful of wasting her time and all of that sort of stuff. But in actual fact, just allowing the conversation to unfold. Right. I remember you talked about an interview you did with someone where you felt underprepared um, and it was fine in the end. It was a woman, I can't remember who it was now you mentioned, but you felt underprepared and it was fine in the end. And so for me, I think the journey that everybody goes on, no matter what stage they're at, so whether it's you, whether it's me, or whether it's someone who's starting their very first Facebook page, um, you know, you just got to let some of the stuff be be what it is, and roll with that, and be okay with it being human, and an, and an illustration of being human. I think. I actually don't think people are going to be lining up to criticize you. Um, I, I no, I don't think so either. No, no, I don't think it's yeah. Gonna be a, I don't think it's going to be a lineup, but I think I think we'll get some. Like I think people will see a side that uh, that maybe I probably I never show right. 
Yeah. But I live in, like, I, I genuinely live in optimism and happiness and positivity almost all the time. But, yeah. but in the moments where I don't, as soon as I start the film, like, I start thinking message and I, I move back to positivity. So when yeah. it's capturing that live, like, oh, you actually get to see something. And then, and then I, I, I guess in my head is, that's really cool. I love that we caught that on film. And then let's send it the test and she can fix me. This is my mind. This is my thought process. <laughs> See, that's where, that's where you've got some magical thinking going on there, man. <laughs> that's true. That's my optimism positivity. I think it's sort of leaning towards, you know, oh, Tess is going to fix me is kind of like, you know, yeah, I've told you before, you know, I didn't graduate from Hogwarts. <laughs> I think I'm a magician. Yes. You sound like you graduated from Hogwarts, so you, therefore you did. You got the accent. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I'm still going with the gold star hat idea, though. That's exactly. Happen. Okay. Okay. So, so anyway, I'm, I'm super I, I think just being able to play back and then because what, how I think versus what actually is, there's probably a difference. Yeah. And so being able to see on film yeah. what actually is and then how I see yeah. that versus how you might see that or Nina might see that or somebody else. Yeah. I'm not going to get tons of hate, but there'll be some moments that then people won't understand. And, uh, I think it'll be really yeah. cool. Or they might laugh at me. Yeah. Excited. Okay. So that, that was, those are the before those four things were like before I interview somebody taking a stage, filming my videos and, and the whole live stream and idea of it hasn't yeah. happened yet, but I'm about to do it. And so I get, uh, Do you get those fears now when you're doing like stories on Instagram or if you're doing any other live streaming? Depend, usually not, but it depends on the situation, yeah. right? So like if I'm going to interview somebody that I don't know, yes. To sit mm. down and do this, no. Mm. Right? Yep. You yep. know, like I've never talked about a lot of this stuff before. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Most things, no. But for like even even my thing tomorrow – um, I'm, I'm doing a, basically a Q and a with the founder. This is the keynote. Mm-hmm. It's a Q and a with the guy who's, who organized the event. Uh, this is the one you're talking about that you were going to do all Q and a. Yeah. Is this that one? Yeah. Awesome. Well, this I is new for you, Dallas. right? I did it in Dallas last ah, year. And, it, and right, it was, right. it was the, like so many people came up after that. So that was the best yeah. session at the whole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and I, I prepared zero for it because it's always bouncing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been doing the preparation and just how I live, right? And all of the stuff is my preparation, but I didn't go with the set speech. Same thing for tomorrow. I'm, he's going he's gonna to talk to me, ask me some questions, and we're going to go over to the audience and, and take questions for the That's hour. That's the best. I love that. I yeah. think it's, and it's zero. I'm not nervous at all, but if I had to do a yeah. speech, I would be nervous about getting the speech perfectly. And, and, yeah. But I don't think it's me playing small and like I'm just running away from the fear of doing a speech. Because I think the Q and A format actually leads to a better result, better outcome, yeah, for the audience. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. That's right. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. Um, I've actually got a few mentoring clients at the moment who are doing some public speaking, and and they uh, and a few of them are caught in that perfectionism around what should I speak about, and they're so it's so easy to get stuck in the heads of the audience instead of stuck in stuck into the work of preparing just what you know and so for so many of them I'm saying you could talk you could talk for days about the stuff you know really well you know, you could talk unprepared for days about the stuff you know I mean I've got clients who are you know you know really experts in um mental health of new mums right I've got uh clients who are really experts in the experience of international aid workers and they could talk for days about what they know about those areas. And so I think that it, all of us can get stuck in that perfectionism and that anticipation of what the audience is going to think or what they might say. But that's what I love about your Q&A approach is it takes the, the, um, the oxygen out of that equation and it just makes it just a very honest conversation with you and your audience. You can't prepare because you don't know what questions they're going to ask you. Awesome. Well, and this, is, this is the evolution of Evan Carmichael, but, but also I, I think it's way harder to do Q and A. And I used to hate yeah, it. Yeah. I would say, yeah. we're going to do this test. Great. What questions are you going to ask me before we go? Because I want to make sure. I'm I know. Right. 
the, yeah, the idea yeah, yeah, yeah. of spontaneous in front of a room full of hundreds of people and I have no idea what we're going to talk about mm. would have destroyed me X yep. number of years ago. Yeah. And that was the best. Yeah. Oh, it's great. I hate having prepared questions, whether I'm interviewing or being interviewed. Much rather a conversation that's natural and comfortable and just flows. Um, and I guess, you know, you can kind of, you can expand that to an audience. You know, people love something that's natural and relatable and they feel like they're just getting, they're in something, they're in an experience. They're not being lectured at. I feel like I'm a superhero with all these lines across my face. Can you see this? Well, you're kind of like, you know, like Great. you're like a zebra. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like my, my, and I've got my panda. Friend. Great. I love this. <laughs> Like it's wild. It's the wild, well, the wild animal version of uh, the Evan Carmichael and Tess Crawley show. The, the clouds on are- safari. Yeah, on safari. We're on safari. Mm. Okay, so, so yeah, so tomorrow I'm not nervous. I mean, I don't nothing. No, but I'm yeah. super excited to go off and do it and really help people. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. Now you said before though about getting on stage for a workshop. What is it about workshops that makes you get a bit? So yes. here's the thing. So for the for the past, I don't know how many months. Let's say six months. I was doing a, I was yeah. doing a, do a weekly Toronto workshop where it was just Q and A. It was just Q and A. And then I uh, I decided to have a theme for each one. So this theme this week the theme is going to be this, right? So it's going to be this about- is where people rock up to the studio and and this is each week in the in the dance studio. People mm-hmm. rock up. Entrepreneurs rock up. It's that one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So it was all, only Q&A, bring whatever questions you have. And it was all over the place and I loved it. Um, but then I thought, look, maybe I'll try adding more structure to it. And I, and I yeah. asked people in the group and it's like, yeah, we'd love to have a little more structure to the sessions. Uh, it's like, okay, so I'll, I'll talk for 10, 20 minutes at the beginning and then go Q&A. And the Q&A might still bounce around, but at least we have a general theme at the beginning. So it's, okay, what do I say in those 20 minutes? to now I have to kind of prepare, mm. right? Now I got to yeah. show up and, and say something. Um, mm. And so I didn't really prepare a speech or anything going into yesterday. It's like, okay, what do I want to talk about? What's the main problem here? Mm. And then just start, start yeah. riffing for that. Um, but that's, that's, that caused me a little more nervousness because I had to prepare yeah. a speech as opposed to just uh, showing up and say, hey, what do you got for me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. Gotcha. Morning, darling. Yeah. Got miniature crawlies are emerging. <laughs> All right. I, I think, I think um, that it's that preparation thing, isn't it? It's that anticipation. It's the anticipation of um, being good enough. Can I be good enough? Am I going to be good enough? Right. All of that sort of stuff, as opposed to any real belief that you're not good enough. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it's only, um, it's not whether or not people are paying money and whether or not you're providing value, because I know those sessions don't cost anything for people, right? So it's, it's that sense of, um, am I, are they going to get what they came for? Are they going to get what they came for? Are they going to get their questions answered? Am I going to be good enough for them? I think that's really interesting because I imagine if you actually had, say, a list of topics and they drew one out of a hat on the night and then you spoke for 10 or 20 minutes, Yeah. I don't think you'd have, you wouldn't have the same nerves. No. Yeah. So it's that anticipation. Yeah. 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 That forward projection. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I do? What do I do, Tess? <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just serious, right? <laughs> Fix it, fix it. Okay, all right, all right. Pressure's on. So, okay, so if it's the yeah, anticipation. Right. Like, here, here's the thing. So this guy showed up with a VR camera. He's like, Evan, I want to film you in 3D. But you have to look into my VR camera, and you have to look like they have all these – a VR camera has, like, 20 cameras, but you can't look into the camera. you got to look, like, between the cameras. And he mics me up, and then – and he said, I'm going to give you a question and you just, and then you say, Hey, Evan, say, say, Hey, I'm Evan Carmichael. And then you answer the question like, Oh my God. Okay. Yes. Go, 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 go. What's the question? What's the question? Right. And then he gives yeah. me, and then I go on this rant talking to the camera, just pull out of the hat. Yeah. 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 But if yeah. I knew going in that I had to talk about this for 20 minutes, 
then I'm going to do more work in preparation. It's going to cause me some doubts. Yep. So what if you didn't do the work? So what if you deliberately experimented with not doing the work and trusted your own process and trusted your own knowledge? Ooh, ever. So I'm going to go do an interview with somebody that I don't know and not not even look them up? Well, you can look them up five minutes before you start the call. Make sure you check their website, remember who they are. And say just, but I think think the magic with that is when I find something that I, I, I guess... What, I'm, I'm answering my own questions a little bit, but when I find something that I can, yeah. I want to find something that I can pull on. And when I can find something that I can pull on with this person, then I know that's it. I know where we're going to go. But yeah, it's yeah, yeah. okay. like, okay, I'm talking to this guy who's a hardcore salesman. What am I going to talk about with this guy? And then I spend some time just thinking, what, what can I, like, where can this conversation go that it's a unique thing? It's like, oh, you know what? I'm selling my YouTube course and my book. He can help me with my, and then once I got that done, okay, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Think about okay. the angle, and then I'm good. Mm. But I still prepare on the like, I want to say, I want to do an intro on him without memor- like without reading off a bio, but the yeah. remember what his book name was and which companies he got into and a little bit of his story. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I could just say, hey, tell us about you, but I think it's kind of a lazy approach yeah yeah okay so i i think there's there's a fine line between finding stuff out and fear-driven preparation okay so research research versus fear-driven preparation and that's where perfectionism comes in yeah so you know doing stuff because you're worried you're not going to be good enough uh-huh. As opposed to doing stuff because you're curious about a person and you want to get the right, you want to get the angle that's going to be exciting for you. Okay, so, so, so let's 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 workshop this. So yesterday I'm talking to this guy. I spend not a lot of time. Let's say ten minutes, fifteen yeah. minutes. Let's go fifteen yeah. minutes of yeah. how I'm going to. I'm practicing how I'm going to introduce him. I don't even remember how I'm yeah. supposed to introduce the show because it's the second time in and whatever. So it's like, hey, welcome back to the whatever show. Uh, here's what I do. And today I've got this guy on and he's done these, 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 these and I'm excited to talk to him, whatever. Right. Just yep. practicing that for 15 minutes because I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to, I'm going to get something wrong or just say, Hey, here's a guy who I know and yeah. blank on, on one of the you know important things about him. So what should I okay. do? Okay. Well, I, I so that's what it should, but here's what I did recently. So I interviewed um, Anthony Trucks, who's a um, great guy, um, mentor to entrepreneurs, but was a he was an NFL player. He was on American Ninja Warrior. He's former foster care kid. Um, fascinating guy, really nice guy. And... Uh, Now, it would be easy to go into that interview thinking, I don't know anything about NFL or American Ninja Warriors. I know quite a lot about foster kids, but I didn't really want to spend the whole interview talking about that. Um, And somebody, I think it might have even been Simon, sent me a link to an interview that a New Zealand guy had done with Anthony. And it was all about NFL. It was all about the football stuff, which, of course, is Anthony's past. And some reason the idea just clicked that there is a real correlation between parenting and owning a business or nurturing a business and coaching and the coaching that goes on in sport. So we used the parenting analogy as the foundation for our conversation. And that was 10 minutes before the interview. I had that idea. And so when we connected on Zoom, we, we had a, you know, an introductory chat with each other and sort of sussed out each other's, you know, who we each were. And then I said, look, I want to talk about just about, you know, that analogy between parenting and business. And it made for a really great conversation. And I really did feel that it was an angle that hadn't really been, I don't know, I could be wrong, but it felt to me like it was an angle that was new for him. Uh-huh. So there wasn't, it wasn't about practicing. It wasn't about over-preparation. It was an inspiration that I followed. Right. Does that make sense? The yeah, difference. So, listen. So what you said about was fear-driven driven preparation. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Because I think, so I'm talking to the hardcore closer. I don't really know much about this guy. Yeah. He's a hardcore closer. So I mean, just by his name, you know, he's in the sales tactics and, and it's not yeah. the thing that I talk about. So yeah. as soon as I get to the point of, okay, I, I can talk about my book or my course coming up and how do I sell it online? But yeah. that's actually when I do stop. Like I know an angle and then from there, we'll have a discussion. And I know I'll pull something else out. So I do stop yeah. from there. Um, but it's, the other part is how do I introduce him? And I don't want to make a mistake on the names and what he, where he came from and his background and his awards. And I mean, I'm not listing off a thousand things, but I want to get the core essence down. Mm -hmm. If I don't know how to pronounce the last name, I'll go look it up just to make yeah. sure I'm not saying yeah. something wrong. Um, yeah. Maybe that's just, feel, yeah. maybe that's yeah. okay. So I'll ask. But if I'm not sure, I'll, I'll ask, you know, so I think, I'm wondering in there, you know, is there something about not being okay with with checking with the person? Am I pr pronouncing this correctly? Um, you know, or asking. I, I know like, a lot of people. What? Like if somebody came on and interviewed me and said, "Oh no, no, no!" Before, like before, before your before your interview starts. Yeah. And so, so I um, had an interview with Jeanette Fuentes, who's in LA, and when we met, I said obviously not a Spanish speaker, can I check, am I, am I pronouncing this correctly? And I ran, ran my pronunciation, pronunciation past her and she, and she goes, yes, but on. And it was just a really easy question to ask. Mm. It's a little bit like socially when you, if you forget name, people are really anxious about acknowledging that they've forgotten someone's name. Whereas I will say, I'm so sorry, your name's fallen out of my head. Can I really apologise? You know, and, I, and it's on me and I own that. But being right. fearful of acknowledging that lack of knowledge sometimes gets in the way of the next step in the conversation. So you don't have to do that in the interview if you're not sure before the interview starts. I'm just picking up all these little, little, um, like how long does it take you? How do you research how you pronounce somebody's name correctly? Like that takes time. How do you know you've got the right bit of information that's telling you how, when you can just ask the person when you get on the Zoom call? <sighs> So these are like maybe clashing values for me because when, when I go on somebody okay. and they called me like yeah. Evan Charmichael or I don't know, something's like, man, did this person do any yeah. research? I mean, and I'm happy to have a great interview, but yeah. um, I feel like this interview is going to tank because they didn't know any, they don't know anything about yeah. me. I think it's pretty disrespectful. Yeah. If I came on and I said, doctor, oh, wait, what's your name again? I just feel like it's such disrespect to you yeah, yeah. not know your name oh yeah oh yeah I mean I I wouldn't go into an interview not remembering somebody's name obviously you've got that stuff in front of you you know but at a party or socially you know, it's just an example socially um people will be afraid to acknowledge that they've forgotten somebody's name right and I think it's the same with you know using the pronunciation as an illustration I guess as an example it's okay to check with somebody have I got this right as opposed to going in completely um arrogantly and assuming i'm not saying that you do that by the way but just assuming that you've got things right i hate it when people call me tessa there is no a on the end of my name my name is tess call me tessa and i may just want to punch you in the face wow <laughs> i know wow. i don't know why it triggers me big time wow like, oh, we need that live stream <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay you know, I wouldn't actually punch anyone in the face. I don't know. Right? That was fairly aggressive. I feel like we could maybe make that happen. <laughs> I have a feeling that's going to be in the intro <laughs> to this conversation. What if like this, I wonder what the age limit would be for you to actually get upset. Like if, if a seven-year-old called you Tessa, you'd be okay with it. Yeah, of course. But okay. like 14? Yeah, no, that'd be all right. 18. I'd correct them. Yeah, I'd still, I'd correct them. 22. Uh, see? Now, now, we're, now, we're, now, we're getting, buttons. now it's punch in the face territory. Okay. <laughs> Got it. No, I'm not going to punch in the face at 22. That's still a bit young. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Um, now I've completely forgotten what point we were making. Um, we're getting names. Fear-driven fear -driven preparation. 
fear driven preparation. Names, okay, names are important. I get that. And that's maybe a bad example, um, especially because people don't really want to be punched in the face by me. But, but, but I think, you know, you can over prepare. You can over prepare. Um, a little bit like, you know, there's this thing. When I went through university, we had to present, like when I was, you know, post grad in psych. And we had to prepare lectures for our colleagues. We had, to, we had to present our own lectures. And the amount of time it took to prepare the lecture content versus the amount of time it took to prepare a PowerPoint presentation, that's where the perfectionism started creeping in and the procrastination started creeping in. It was the damn <sighs> PowerPoint presentation, not the actual content of the lecture. And um, I saw something recently, I think it was Harvard Business School, actually did a study that showed that PowerPoint is is worse than useless, like it's a waste of time wow. because people can't read and listen at the same time, which right. we all know. And and yet I still see people making doing presentations for conferences and whatever and their focus is all on what's going into the PowerPoint slides and they're all anxious. I haven't finished my PowerPoint slides and the, the organisers are hassling me for my PowerPoint slides the focus needs to be on the content and again that whole idea of if you're talking about something you know really really well and trust that you know it really really well you're going to get up and do a really good presentation without powerpoint slides um i did a conference presentation a year ago i was right in the middle of a whole lot of staffing changes in my business it was a really stressful time and i had no powerpoint slides it was a discussion around how to build a private practice in a small rural community uh, which I had done in the past. And in the end, to give people something to look at other than me while I spoke, I just chucked a bunch of photos of my family and I when we were going through that process ourselves. So it was just a visual presentation while I spoke. And um, and it was a great presentation. I got great feedback. Everybody loved it. I did live stream it. So there was a video record that the presenters, the organisers were happy that they had something to hand out to people who couldn't attend. Um, and there was no PowerPoint angst so there's that that whole thing around fear driven preparation that gets in the way of trusting the process so that was a that was actually a really good 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 illustration to me that it makes no difference whether you've got the powerpoint slides or not again using powerpoint as an example of what can get in the way of just trusting the process yeah i mean when i did my keynote in in paris uh i don't know maybe three years ago i challenged myself yeah. to my slides are always just a visual of what I'm talking about, but yeah. also yeah. So it's never really words on a slide, just a picture that talks to the yeah. point and helps illustrate it. But I also used the, the crutch in it was that it kept me on track for that. Oh, when this like, Oh, now, now I know what I talk about when this like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So when I went to Paris to do a keynote for um, HR company, uh, I had one slide. Yeah. Right. And it was just like a bunny rabbit. That was a slide. <laughs> it tied into one you need, panda. you need a panda slide. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, but it, but so, so I had to do my whole speech to one slide. And if I fell off track, here I am, the keynote speaker to close off their thing for 45 minutes or whatever it was. And I, I could get stumbled or lost. So I prepared like crazy to have a perfect mm -hmm. memorized speech that then I got up and I delivered a basically that version of it, right? I mean, I might have yeah, messed yeah. up a couple of words, changed a little bit of a topic, but I went up yeah. and spoke what I practiced. Uh, but it was, a, it was a test to not rely on the slides, but instead of relying on the slides, I relied on my memory through practice yeah. to get it up. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I guess I'm trying to figure out what's, what's, how do I know the difference between smart preparation and fear-driven <laughs> preparation? Ask yourself the question, what's going to happen? What's going to happen if I don't do this? Well, that's what I ask yeah. myself when I'm afraid too, though, right? I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what's the worst that can happen? And then if that happens, well, what's so bad about that? And then if that happens, well, what's so bad about that? And then if that happens, well, what's so bad about that? And you actually, you realize that you actually, when you drill down into that, you're actually worrying about something that at the end of the day isn't that important. So you could be giving a presentation to HR people in Paris and forget your words. Now, you could get really anxious because you can't remember the words you were going to say because you 
pra- prepared and prepared and practice and practice and practice and you wanted it to be perfect and you've forgotten what you're going to say next and you can let the anxiety get to you or you can talk about something else and still be engaging because you're still Evan Carmichael. So the fear thing, I mean, obviously in the moment on stage is not the best illustration of, of when to be arguing with your fear, but but you know the, that's the reality of what would happen if you forgot what you were going to say on stage. You would say something else. You would you would catch yourself and you would just move on. So nothing really really bad is going to happen. I hear what you're saying. I'm not totally buying into it. Uh, why am oh. I buying into it? Yeah. So this is where the entrenched stuff. You don't want to believe that. You don't want to uh, believe that it's it's all okay. You know, even this. So here's an example. My espresso series, uh, mm. I don't know if you've seen them, but it's like me, I play a clip of somebody and then I do a rant. And most of my rants are, I do a little bit of thinking before, I'm in Toronto, in my home, my studio, I write down the three points I want to talk about it. Yeah. And then, and then I, I talk to those points, but I plan yep. what my three things are going to be. It's planned out. Yep, yep. But when I travel, I don't have to do any on this trip, but last weekend in yep. Dallas, I had to do three videos. And so I pull up my phone, I go to the parking lot and I make videos. And I'm I usually actually have more energy than I do back home in Toronto. Cause I'm like, I'm walking the street and, I, and I'm just riffing off of what the, the theme is. And I looked at the, the, the scoring on the video and the prepared ones do better. Even though there's slightly less energy, the three yeah. point prepared videos engaged people more. And so I said, okay, well, now as much as possible, I want to try to have it. And I'm not over-preparing. I'm not stressing out. No, no, no. But to your point of like what I'm not necessarily buying into or having a hard time is if I'm on stage, so tomorrow, if that was a speech yeah. And, yeah. and I have no slides and I'm just going to stand there and talk and I blank out in the middle of it, I, f- I still feel like my, if I prepared a little bit more, my speech would have been better and not that. Yeah, I, but that's the okay. self-punishment. Yeah, so that's the self-punishment argument. So that's okay. Yeah, if that's the if only argument. Yeah, if only I was better. If only I was more prepared. If only. If only. If only. If only. Right. There's a great, um, great short video that I saw recently. Um, Australian Broadcasting Corporation put it out. Um, it was we like a follow-up. From Australia here. You what? I we don't watch well. anything from Australia here. Except me, I know. Right? <laughs> From the bottom of the heart of Australia, here she is, Tess Crawley. You, you pro- uh, I probably, yeah, this is it. This is my Australian content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am your Australian content. I love that. Um, so anyway, so it was a follow-up piece to um, something that happened on morning television uh, here in Australia. So a guy was being interviewed on morning TV, live morning TV, breakfast TV, had a panic attack, mm-hmm. went to speak completely incapable of speaking, Mm -hmm. full-blown panic attack on stage in front of the cameras. Um, And the the interviewers handled it really gracefully. They just sort of, um, you know, said something like, we'll come back to you um, another time. We'll have this conversation another time. And they moved on to another topic. They handled it. Um, The video I was watching was the follow-up. So what happened after that? So you, you kind of feel like that must be the worst thing that could possibly happen to someone, right? Having a panic attack, unable to speak on camera in front of a a live audience um that guy has then gone on to and i can't remember the full story but he's actually gone on to be able to speak uh, about anxiety and about panic disorder and it's actually been a game changer for him so that experience was a positive game changer for him so even the bad experiences that we have there's something to learn and grow from and we build in our minds these pictures of a disaster scenario playing out and oh I will I won't cope with that is the bottom line I won't cope with that or my career won't cope with that and we disasterify it so and the, the reality the reality the is no bad thing, it's not that I won't cope and it's not that I my career will suffer it's even in that scenario like if I go on stage tomorrow and yeah. just think and, and like I get a bunch of after question, questions and I just like, I vomit all over stage and I have, you know, great. I, I actually know that this is going to be a crazy story that I'm yeah. going to be able to tell for many years. 
But yeah, yeah, right. But I still let the people in the room down. Like no matter what, if my career goes on and becomes amazing, mm-hmm. awesome. The people who paid to come and see me tomorrow, yeah. they were actually they were disappointed. They were let down. There's nothing I can do to go back and help those people, mm-hmm. but I could have prepared a little bit more if I was yeah. ready. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. But I think, you know, I think that we're getting back to that whole conversation about being human. If you are illustrating your humanity, there's still something that people are taking away from that experience. A hundred percent. We're talking about preparation yeah. and how much of it. Yeah, I'm, I know. I'm trying to figure out like yeah. preparation versus what you said, which I really, I found interesting and twigged of the fear yeah. of preparation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The difference. Okay, so thinking about fear-based, you know, preparation, but just think about the flavour of it. You know, am I doing this work and I'm feeling excited by it or am I doing this work and I'm feeling pressured? Pressure. You know, I'm doing, yeah. But that's fear-based? Every I'm pressure doing it because, I'm, no, not every pressure is fear-based, but if you're doing research and you're, and there's that sense of pressure, there's that sense of um, anxiety around it, there's that sense of something won't be right if I don't do this work. Stopping for a moment and just going, oh, hang on, do I really need to be doing this? Is this a fear-driven exercise or is this an excitement-based? Is this fueling me? You know, if I'm finding out something about a person that I'm about to speak to and I'm really engaged by what I'm reading, I could read for five hours on it because I'm really engaged by it and I'm excited to be learning more about that thing. That's very different to feeling like I need to prepare for five hours or I've not done a good enough job. Isn't that just a mental game? I feel like I could tell myself I'm excited or I'm afraid. Yeah, that's no, but it's not about telling yourself. It's about noticing what's actually happening. So I always feel like in these scenarios that we talked about here, I feel pressure. Yeah. I feel yep. like I'm gonna let I'm gonna let them down if I don't do a good job. Yep. I feel like if I haven't yep. done a little bit of research on them and know what my angle is gonna be, that it's not gonna be a good interview and it's gonna disappoint yep. myself, them, the audience, and it'll just be lazy like I come out of I come thinking that I'm not proud of myself for the preparation to show up and just not have done any work it's based on I, I still think I'm awesome but I need to find yeah. but when I find the angle then then I'm good to go I don't want to spend 20 minutes kind of like fishing around yeah you kind of aiming hopelessly yeah so it's it's pressure it's fear I'm not yeah. enjoying doing it uh, yeah but it still feels like the right thing to do. Yeah. So these are in these examples. That's how you feel when it's those examples of you feeling like you're not good enough. Those, those examples you had written down, that list you prepared. Yeah, yeah. And That's so, what it's like for you. We only did, we yeah. only did the, the we, didn't, we didn't hit the other side of the list, which is the, <laughs> I have <laughs> failed and I don't feel good enough. This is like, I might yeah, fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, yeah, next this time, is the I'll what if. This is the what if. Yeah. This is the so, what if. I mean, yeah, it's the what if. It's the what if scenarios, and I think, um, I mean, it just sounds like a horrible, horrible emotional pit to be sitting in. That feeling. That sounds awful, um, and it is driven by being that fear of not being good enough. I mean, if you were struggling to find the angle and trusting that you will still be good enough. I think it would be a very different feeling. Um, well, it is. It is. I mean, yeah. I know that I can find an angle. I feel like I find an angle with anybody. But until I know yeah. what it is, I'm not comfortable going on and doing an interview just because. Uh, now, to your point of like, if you pulled it out of the hat, if it was random, yeah. someone just came on live and said, hey, pick me. And I did a, hey, yeah. who are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's just different expectations involved versus, hey, I yeah, have yeah. this guest coming on and I want to treat them with a little bit of respect that I should know a little bit about them and where yeah. I want to take this interview versus just yeah. it will be spontaneous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think there's that middle ground, isn't there? There's the middle ground about, you know, coming from a place of respect and coming from a place of understanding and the place of knowledge 
um, versus coming from a place of fear that I won't be good enough. But in that so process, recognizing the driving force. Good enough. In the process, you, your feet. The, so doing the work triggers the fear. Doing the work triggers the fear. So is, is that what is that what's going on? I'm trying to catch up. So as, so as soon as I find the thing that I'm going to pull on, I'm I'm great. That's what we're going to talk about. I'm ready to go until I find that thing, and I trust that there's a thing. I like there's nobody I've ever yeah. spent four hours researching. Like I usually pick it up in in ten yeah. minutes just looking at the website. Yeah. We're not talking yeah. about like days of me yeah. sulking, but but it's those ten minutes that now I'm living in that state. Yeah. That yeah. is that can that be corrected? Should that be corrected? Is that yeah. it's fear driven? It's mostly fear driven. Like I don't want to not have something to talk about that's good. Yeah. As much as I can yeah. tell, hey, I want to provide great value for my audience, and you know, I want to find the best angle. It's Yes, but I'm just scared that I'm not going to do the best job. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But then when yeah. I find the one thing, then I'm good to go. Then you're good to go. In those 10 minutes yeah. or in the 10, 15 yeah. minutes practicing his name and his website and just repeating the intro because I don't want to mess it up. I mean, if I, if I don't get everything right, it's fine. But yeah. I will say it and then, and then just screw up. So like, oh, I should practice this five times just so that I don't sound like a total idiot and, and not about me. Again, it's like mm. this person mm. coming on. Mm. Yeah, okay. But it's all fear-based. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, so what fear do we do? Screwing up, that fear of, fear of not being good enough. Look, I think, I think at the end of the day, um, does it affect you? Like, does it stop you from achieving does that fear get in the way of you doing good work uh momentarily how but here's the thing momentarily when i catch it right like making my yeah. videos every tuesday i'll probably procrastinate for 15 to 30 minutes maybe 45 that's a minutes. lot that's huh? a lot that's yeah. a lot of procrastination yeah, You're yeah. A busy man you haven't got time for that i but well, that's what i'm saying on Tuesdays, yeah. I know I have to film this video or these series of videos. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, 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 I do it, but I'll procrastinate yeah. for 15 to 45 minutes. And, and, you know, I don't know. What are you doing during that press procrastination time? Stupid stuff. I don't know. Not, not, stu- it's actually not true. Stupid stuff. Yeah. Just something else. I mean, yeah. I'll look over an old video. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll read through some of the other stuff that I have to do that day and, and like work yeah. on a project. I mean, it's not, I'm going to go and watch Netflix or something. It's not, yeah. I'm productive, but I'm not on yeah. the thing that I should be doing. Right? Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. And it's because I'm afraid that this is not going to do well and I, I don't want it to be mm. better than what I've done before. Um, yeah. So, but, but these are the ones that I've told you about, like I'm, I'm usually conscious of, and then it's only max 45 minutes, right? Yep. Yep. But I, I'm, there's probably a whole bunch that are subconscious that I don't even notice that are mm. happening. That ha- if I can, if I ever catch a subconscious thing and make it conscious, my personality mm. has been trained that I will destroy that thing. I, I love the, as soon as I catch, you know, I've been, yeah. all I've been doing for the past 30 minutes is procrastinating. Screw that. Let's go. And then like get in front of the camera and just just because, right? Yeah. But it's the catching the unconscious that I'm probably doing even right now that I don't notice. Yeah. 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 I think sometimes we procrastinate because we don't really want to do the thing or we're not energized by the thing. And sometimes we're procrastinating because we're nervous. So, um, you know, it might be you're doing, you know, if you're doing a live stream and, um, so here's an example. I wanted to do a live stream. I had this idea. It was pouring with rain. And I had this idea that, um, you know, starting your own business and expecting not to have ups and downs in your business journey is a bit like standing in the rain and expecting not to get wet. And I was going to, I was going to film this. I was going to do this live stream. I had this great idea. I was going to stand in the rain, let myself get soaked to the skin while I do this live stream to illustrate my point, right? Mm. 
Thank you so much. And I've faffed about and stuffed about and mucked about and it stopped raining. Ah. And like, and so two weeks later, finally, it starts raining again. So I did the video yesterday. And um, you did it. And I did it. I did it. Yeah. So I did it yesterday. But, you know, because it, I stuffed about. Yeah. And the reason I was stuffing around was because I had this little thing going on in my head, which sometimes happens when I'm going to do a live stream of, am I sure this is a good idea? Or do I really know what point I'm going to make? And again, it's a fear based thing. Yeah. Because we, we all have it, right? We all, we all have those moments. So for me, that's a procrastination. That was a fear-based thing and it got in the way and it stopped me from achieving the end result. Mm-hmm. Other times it's procrastination because I don't actually really want to do the thing. Yeah. And so yeah. for me, it's almost like making a decision, spending time to make a decision. Do I actually want to do this or would I rather spend my time doing something else? For sure. um, so again, it's about in the moment being aware of what you're doing and whether it's a fear-driven thing or whether it's some other thing that's holding you back and and delaying the outcome from being achieved. Okay, but even if it is a fear-based thing, yeah, yeah, then what? So if it's a fear-based thing, do the damn thing. Just do it. Just stop procrastinating. Stop perfectionisming. Stop trying to be perfect. Stop thinking too much about about outcome and trust the process. Trust that you're good enough. Trust that you already know what you're doing and just take action and do the bloody thing. And we all do this. We all get in our own way and spend right. too much time stuffing about because we're actually scared. So... Um, what about when you're... So, I mean, again, when I catch it, I'm usually... Then I take action yeah. on it. Turning yeah. from subconscious to conscious. Yeah. So I yeah. hear you. I think I'm good at that part of it. You it's, are. You are. Your based stuff. Well, I'm being selfish. Uh, fix me and everybody else gets fixed. <laughs> well, fix you. Well, I... <laughs> Listen, can I tell you something? For at least a thousand sure, people. Sure, tell me. For at least a thousand people. <laughs> for at least a thousand people, you are the Tess Crawley is the only Australian content they consume. Wow. Yep. Wow. It's not just me. Me me and old Skippy memes. Skippy yeah. bush kangaroo memes. Yeah. 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 I'm not really with Skippy. Australia for at least a thousand people. <laughs> I don't know that I, can, oh. I, I, I can name a single Australian. Surely you point. can. No, I think of the kangaroo guy. But I, can't, I can't remember his name. Who's the kangaroo guy? The guy who died by the stingray. Now his son. Oh, is Steve Irwin. Uh, yeah, I'd say I don't think of him as the kangaroo guy. But yeah, yeah, Steve Irwin. He's a crocodile uh, man. Right now, I'm totally blanking. This is my, me being human. I'm probably going to go back home and, and punch myself in the face. And all my Australians. <laughs> Hate on me, but I cannot. If you said name an Australian, I can't come up with anybody except Dr. Tess Crowley. Ah, well, and, that's and a bit Henry. special. Henry. I think you know the next time. The next time we're in the same room, I need to. Um, I need to coach you on Vegemite toast. I'm very good at training people how to like Vegemite. I've heard and of it people. People are very afraid of Vegemite. Be afraid. But it's like it's like the whole fear thing. You know, bring it, bring it back to that. A little bit of fear is okay, right? A little bit of fear is okay. And when we give it too much oxygen and we give it too much energy, it can destroy the whole thing. Vegemite is the same. You want a tiny little bit of Vegemite on your toast. Your toast has got to be hot. It's got to have butter on it. And then a tiny little bit of Vegemite and it's heaven. It's magic. Too much Vegemite, you've destroyed the whole thing. Chuck it out. I'm Workless. Down. That's easy. I love the you Vegemite. Just- I'll take the Vegemite. Send it to me. I'll eat the whole can of Vegemite. You it's see, fun. you will not eat the whole. It's not even. It doesn't even come in a can. Uh, <laughs> no, you can't eat the whole can of Vegemite. That is not the point. Like even you thing. saying that makes me want to just eat the whole can. That <laughs> stuff is easy. It, it's <laughs> that's not the problem. <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> understanding, like I come back to doing the interview with this guy. Yeah. Yep. I feel like it's the right thing to do, even though it's out of fear. And so I'm not going to make a change. I yeah. won't change unless I No, no, no. Like, and no one's saying you should. Yeah. And nobody's, like I say, a little bit of fear is okay if it's driving you for the right reason. So, you know, stress has a purpose. Anxiety has a purpose. At, it, at the low level, stress, that feeling of stress energizes us. It makes us move. It's one of our 
very uh, basic core survival things as a species, why we've lasted so well, because fear and anxiety or at, at their sort of lower levels push us to do things and to do things differently and to get away from danger and all of that sort of stuff, right? So it serves a purpose and it's energising us to avoid mistakes that we've already learnt from in the past, right? It, it teaches us, it reminds us to not repeat mistakes that we've been burnt by in the past. It's when it stops you from achieving. That's the problem and that's the thing to be watching for is if it's stopping you from achieving. I don't think it's stopping you from achieving. But I think, you know, when you say fixing you fixes other people, it's a conversation for other people to be thinking about how many times in their day or their week does fear, procrastination and perfectionism get in the way of them getting the job done, whatever the job is. And thinking about that, reflecting on that and then using whatever they can simple things if you're procrastinating or if you're wasting time because you're stuck in fear and perfectionism getting up and moving physically getting out of your chair and then coming back to your desk and sitting down and starting again if something as simple as that as a little hack can help burst through that fear because it's just a, it's a you're changing the track of what's going on in your brain i just recognize it and once i recognize it, i just wanted just because yeah and that's what this whole conversation is about is about you. And that's the journey that you've been on. Like I said, right at the start today, you're now able to generate a list, which when we first started talking, you weren't really, that wasn't as accessible to you. It was much harder for you to generate that awareness and that knowledge of these are examples of when this happens for me. So your insight into that has grown. Your capacity to recognize that has grown. And so, yeah, now you act on it, you see it, you do something about it. Okay. Use it for good, not for evil. <laughs> what, what am I doing for evil, Tess? Come on. No. Whatever, like, whatever it is, that's what you do. No, that's what you do. That's what you do. <laughs> when you've got this little bit of fear, you're using it for good. You know, okay. you're using it to motivate you. You're using it to energize you. That's using it for the purpose that it is intended from an evolutionary perspective. It's when we let it stop ourselves. And when we let it get in the way of achieving, that's when fear is being used for evil. <laughs> All right. I don't know. On top it's potential. early. It's Saturday morning. I like <laughs> it. Okay. So, so I know, I know we're, you know, we're, we, we spent a good amount of time on this. So next month I can go over the rest of my list about where sure. I have, have failed instead of. Yeah. I think that's a great my, conversation. My fear of, yeah. of potential failure. I think I should yeah, yeah, yeah. put a Vegemite on on air and eat it. No, that's going to happen. That can't happen. No, no, no. That is really? forbidden until we're, until we're in the same room. That's so perfect. I am going to you because uh, no, it's it's huh? no. Huh? Huh? trusting no, your abilities. No, 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 no. It's not perfectionistic. It's control freak. Get your terms right. Um, I am wow. going to be making wow. the Vegemite toast. I will be making that's the Vegemite <laughs> toast. I will be making the Vegemite toast. <laughs> You're not allowed to try it because what will happen is you will hate it and I'll say, you see, you should have let me make it for you in the first place. Wow. So, it's you know. a recipe. It's not a re No. It's not a no. recipe. No, well, it's an art. It's an art. Anyway. Vegemite toast is an art. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so my my homework is. I mean, I already have the second list, so that's good. Yeah, so yeah. Because I yeah. need to be more aware of when these things are happening. Try to catch yeah. them and do the right thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So next time, I think we get together talking about the actuals, the actuals of where fear gets yeah. in the way and has stopped you from achieving. I think it's a great conversation for us now. Well, I've got, I've got like eight or nine points on that. So we can go into that. Is there anything else awesome. you need to work on for the next month besides trying to spot more of these things? No, I, I, yeah, I just think keep an eye on it. You know, just keep an eye on, on when it pops up and by all means, jot them down if you want to talk about them next time we get together. But, I, like the um, I like the push. I know you do. All right. Yeah, I know you do. Do you like? <laughs> You'll go. 
you, do you know what? The light on your face is looking like one of those screen tests for some kind of sci-fi film, you know, when they're getting ready to do the uh, green screen. Like green screen I like that too. Though. Yeah, you see? Uh, yeah, that's avatar exactly right. Like yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I've been playing with it. Yeah, I've been yeah. dancing in and out of the sun. As yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. I back out and... I didn't yeah, tell yeah, you yeah. to leave, but we'll get to that another time. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We will absolutely okay. get to that. Thank you, Tess. People who want to find you, no worries. Where, where are they going? Well, you can actually just go to my website, tesscrawley.com.au, or you can go to Facebook at Tess Crawley Mentoring, um, on Instagram, and pretty much everywhere. There's only one, one A in Tess Crawley. Okay, get it right. There's no A. There's no. Oh, yes, there is one A. Ah! In the whole name. Ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no A in Tess, though. <laughs> You're funny. I love it when you make yourself laugh. It happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, okay. awesome. Thank you for the laugh, Tess. No Bye. worries. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye. If you want to see Dr. Tess push me in our last conversation, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. It's hurting my company. It's hurting my ambitions, my goals. We're just people doing the best we can and, and sometimes, it's, sometimes it's messy.